happened recently or are still happening. Let me tell you a little bit more about our first speaker, Walter. Um, I think I met Walter a few years ago when I decided to support Box Green, and I've been subscribed to that service ever since. Delicious yumminess in really um, personality full packaging. Uh, and I think Walter is very much like that as well, a personality full packaging, bringing a lot of energy and laughter to the events that he organized. He doesn't stay here, but he used to be part of Startup Grind, and that's why I knew him too. Okay, so he says he works with a bunch of squirrels, and I think they do have that kind of excitement towards life and towards their work, but maybe he will say otherwise. Okay, please welcome Walter. Thank you, thank you. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, we're good. Oh, it's a big crowd, actually. It's been a while since I spoke to such a big... Uh, sure. Uh, just, just before I start, I think, big thanks to Angela for inviting me here. I think the biggest reason is also she's been a really avid supporter of Box Green. We, we kind of started out two years ago, two and a half years ago, and she's one of the very first few subscribers to the service. And even up to today, she's still you know, with us. And... Uh, She's given us a lot of input. Every time we send a feedback form, she's the first to sign, to comment, you know, how awesome the packaging is, you know, we finish up the snacks, blah, 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 blah. So <laughs> it's really awesome to have uh, Angela to be supporting me. So yeah, I think you guys kind of know what I do already. So Box Green is, uh, I was just looking back again, you know, when we talk about technology, food com company, blah, blah, blah. I think that's kind of like the first like fuck up <laughs> of the night because that's kind of like the pitch we send it to our investors. <laughs> They like to know. They, they like to know that there's a technology angle, so you have to position yourself as, as a technology startup, and uh, that's why I probably need to relook at the the profile before I send it over the, in the future. So, yeah, I mean, Box Green, we we are in the business of helping people snack good, and uh, it started when me, uh, myself, and my partner Andrew, we were both in the financial sector. You know, you graduate, and then uh, you want to get a good job in the bank. And then you work long hours in investment banking, the very traditional route. And uh, the, the truth is uh, you sit for 12 hours a day and uh, you kind of like binge eat whatever that's there. The, the chocolate, the Kit Kats, the Oreos that's there and you just like open it up when you're stressed. So we thought like, you know, it wouldn't it be nice if someone would send us something healthy. It was during like a lunch break that I had this uh, conversation with, and with Andrew. So the, wouldn't it be nice if someone would send us something healthy every week or month? So at the very night, I went to buy the domain. My, my partner is called Andrew. So I went to buy the domain andrewsnuts.com. <laughs> so <laughs> I know, not the best choice, because if you Google Andrew's Nuts, it turns out, you know, the Google images shows a lot of different things. <laughs> so, and I, I kind of like, okay, let's MVP, right? You know, you look at TechCrunch and you read all these articles and you're like, okay, that's MVP. It means minimal viable product. You launch something quickly and, you know, see what happens. So I put in a PayPal button. And on the site, uh, if you go to andrewsnuts.com, it's still there, by the way. It's really ugly. <laughs> uh, you can still buy a, a, a box from the site. But, but yeah, and, and it grew from there. You know, 20 people, our friends subscribed. And then uh, it was like, uh, it was when uh, a company kind of called in and asked like, hey, you guys, can you fill up the pantry for us? We are looking for healthy snacks. And then I was like, all right, it's time to quit my job. And then I quit my job. <laughs> so uh, so I, I think the first struggle that I really had, you know, really was like, like any other graduate nowadays. I, I think back then, finance was still kind of like the big thing. Uh, and especially Singapore being a financial hub, uh, it's always good to come back and, and work in the financial. I mean, I'm not sure how many of you are like in, in the finance industry here. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, you know, good money, but you know, you probably non-stop, right? <laughs> so, uh, so the leap of faith was really like kind of crazy. Uh, I had a lot of struggles when I first started. Uh, even the first few months, uh, I'm always telling my wife like, you know, what, what am I doing? Am I crazy? Uh, and uh, and in the first year, especially, I kept asking myself, you know, I'm I'm really like taking a pay cut, and uh, I'm so miserable, and I'm working out this like my bedroom, shipping out the snacks, uh, really, you know. And my friends, my peers, you know, they're just getting raised and get more promotion every year, and and uh, so it's really like the first year was really tough in terms of the mental side of things. I think every entrepreneur kind of goes through the same thing. Uh, it's it's easy because your peers are like stable job and you are here selling peanuts you give up a job in a in a bank really good one to sell peanuts right so uh it took a while uh but even up to today i think for entrepreneurs every time you hit a roadblock you kind of always question yourself why are you doing this so um yeah i'm still figuring it out actually so i'm no different from you guys 
So yeah, I think it's very classic uh, example of what you know. Okay, so this this whole thing, I got a confession. I kind of did it like yes, only yesterday. Angela has been chasing, chasing, chasing. But yeah, I was thinking, you know, what's the best way to kind of tell the story to everybody? I think keeping it to all memes would be the uh, best way to show how fuck ups happens. So uh, the very classic scenario is everyone thinks you are doling in cash, and then you know my mom thinks. Okay, my mom actually don't think. My mom thinks I'm crazy to quit my job, and every 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 month or every year is kind of like reminding me whether like. It's a good choice, you know. Go back and get a job, you know, it's stable and blah, blah, blah. So, and then the media, like you say, you know, if you look at Tech in Asia, Vulcan Post, yeah, we successful businesses, we raised X million dollars, we raised 20 million, da, 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 da. So, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all like, yeah, that's how it, it works. So, that's what the media thinks. And then, uh, again, you kind of have to drink your own Kool-Aid and feel like you're changing the world, you're doing something great at the same time. But actually, you know, it goes back down to packing the nuts <laughs> and uh, s sourcing and packing and doing the dirty work. Uh, so yeah, at the end, I think a lot of it is very mental. Uh, and yeah, this is pretty much the life of an entrepreneur. It may, may look glorious, uh, but once the article is over, you get back to work. It's uh, back to the grind. Uh, so yeah, I, I think the first part of uh, what I've done so, so far, I was like every other entrepreneur, gotta get on media, gotta get on tech in Asia, gotta get all the media to cover us, gotta raise some funds, show people we have money, hire a great team, <laughs> and uh, grow. Uh, so, you know, that's what I, I started out to, to do right after I quit my job. And I was fortunate enough, I mean, there were, there, there were investors who liked the model, uh, but the road to, to getting there, uh, if I were to go back in time, I would say it's not worth it. It's very brutal. You know, you kind of like, go through multiple investors who don't really know about what you do. Uh, they have their own opinion. Uh, they kind of smash you, telling you, does anyone even eat this? You know, they look at the packaging. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but eventually we got funding. Uh, and uh, it's a blessing and curse at the same time. Uh, I think even in the media, they talk about, you know, venture capital is kind of like a form of drugs. Uh, because once you take it, you keep on taking it, you know. And uh, a big part of the business is once you take, for example, if you have a million dollar in your bank, what you need to do next, right? You have to deploy the capital. And a lot of times, uh, inexperienced founders, even myself included, uh, you kind of don't manage the money very well. So you either be build a team too quickly, or you kind of say like, yeah, take this, do this, take this, do we gotta show the numbers. Uh, so again, uh, I think the media, I think after a year, whatever you read on TechCrunch, <laughs> I'm not sure if there's anybody from Tech in Asia here, but if take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, it's always, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> 40% uh, uh, you know it's like people writing adding good things on it but I think the fundamental still stays uh, that article is great people say good job on your Facebook post but after that you know it's back to work again so the funding scenario again I think one of the businessmen actually gave me a really good advice you know venture capital actually came about only in the 1970s actually it's when you know when Intel was coming there's the semiconductor and they needed money uh, and really comes back, back again from the pharmaceutical industry where if you want to invent a drug to cure cancer, you need to hire a bunch of really smart people, spend five years on working on it, and maybe you don't even get a cure. So that's, that's what it is. You know, it's a gamble and you need to hire good people. So, uh, it, but you know, as startups evolve and up to now, uh, you know, it seems very normal that every startup needs to get some sort of funding to kind of reaffirm them, themselves. But, the way businesses have been done 100 years or 1,000 years ago is you got to be able to be profitable. And that's how you kind of feed, feed the team, right? Uh, and, and grow sustainably. Uh, so yeah, I think funding, it's, 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 a big, it's a big thing out there. It still is. I think Singapore especially, uh, you will never be short of investors uh, wanting to hear about you. But you know, the whole process can be pretty uh, brutal. Yeah, and then you know, I went out, uh, got a bunch of people. Uh, Hired a bunch of people. We have a nutritionist, we have a designer, we have salespeople, we have a marketing team of like. So right now we have a team of 15 working with us. Uh, they're great people, young people, but again, being an ex inexperienced founder, uh, you kind of learn like, okay, it used to be I'm doing the sales, I kind of go out and drive the sales. And then, you know, when it comes down to managing a bunch of 15 people, maybe 75% are millennials, it's a different ballgame altogether. Expectations change. Uh, so, you know, uh, culture. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, culture, things happen. I think these are some of the foundation uh, that we have set up to do. You know, we didn't, we didn't really uh, iron down what's our values, what's our mission. Uh, and those things, you know, for a founder, you just want to focus on growth, right? And it comes back to bite you, you know. And, and when you have a team of four people, you used to be working in a desk and make the decisions. And then when you have a team of 20 people, 
everyone's and you don't talk to them on a day-to-day basis, people start to create their own version of box screen, you know. I like this a little bit cuter, I like this a little bit, you know, uh, you know, this copy, I don't like it, and then what does I don't like it mean, right? Everyone has their version of I like it, I don't like it, so it becomes a little bit subjective. So, yeah, it turns out, you know, we have that conflict with our marketing team, and people kind of like have their own say of what box screen is about, and you know, you can start, everyone worked really hard, for, so for sure, no, nobody's lazing around, right? But everyone's going their own ways. So, you know, that's something I've never thought about it before, because, you know, that's the last thing that'll be on my mind. I'm pretty focused on growing the top line of the business. So, yeah, and when you have one person that's unhappy, you go to a team of, uh, you kind of get like, it starts to grow, and you get a few disgruntled employees who don't believe, or they don't understand uh, what the founders are trying to do. And especially for a startup, it's never a clear path. You know, one day you may want to try this, one day you want to try that, uh, different strategies. Uh, so even for us now, we are still experimenting. I think a big part is, uh, is uh, experimenting around what we can do to grow the business. So, yeah. And then, you know, morale gets low if you kind of have to let people go, which is what's the case because it's affecting everybody. <laughs> and then when you kind of step back and you realize, you know, uh, the founders have to kind of lead, lead that whole mission and values thing again. You can ask themselves, why, why are we doing this, right? Why are we selling nuts again? Uh, so we come back again, asking ourselves, uh, why, right? I mean, it's easy. Why, why go through the trouble? And, um, and, and it's a big team. And it's trying to understand each people. You know, firing someone is always done. And we did that just last month. So it's the hardest, things I, hardest thing I've ever, ever done because it's a talented person. Uh, I almost had like, I never had gastric, you know. Uh, and you know, when I was about to let the person go, I actually had it. And that feeling is some, it's really horrible. It's not something I want to go through again. So you know, the learning is again, you know, uh, when you hire someone, it's, it's your responsibility, whether it turns out to be good or bad. It's the, it's the founder's responsibility at the end of the day. So yeah, it was tough. You know, it's a talented person, but has you know, cultural or attitude issues with the company. So what do you do, right? If it affects everybody in a room or in, in you know, the energy spreads, you know, I think a big part of why we're all here, because you know, I can sense great vibes, great energy with the people and the crowd is, is great. So if it's a smaller team with a company of 10 or 15, it can be felt even more. So we have to make that call. Uh, and, and that happened. Uh, so again, it comes back to the founders now are kind of re-looking at our values, kind of driving it out with the team of what box screen is going to be about. So again, when we start, when you are starting from nothing, uh, you say the only way is up, right? <laughs> yeah, so I think when we come back to understand what we are doing, uh, at the end of the day, box screen is all about snacking good, treating good about your body, and also doing good at the same time. So from the onset of why we started this business, we always wanted to give back, you know, uh, being a banker, being in a, in, in a very privileged position. Uh, I kind of felt like, okay, we, we have the luxury to order all these lifestyle products. But, you know, when I volunteered at the soup kitchen, I kind of understand like, you know, some people can't even afford their three meals. And uh, we, so for every box that we sell, we pledge about a meal equivalent, which is about 2.5% of our revenue uh, to Willing Hearts or whichever market that we're in. So, and uh, really, Tony uh, is the founder of Willing Hearts. If you haven't been there, you should. You just walk in and you can start cooking and packing at, without any restrictions. <laughs> so, uh, and, and the guy was cool because for every dollar that goes in there, uh, I think 90% of it really goes to the end, the beneficiaries. So, yeah, so we came back again to doing good, wanting to do good. I think it's similar to the Hub's belief. It's sustainable growth. And when I came back again, it's, do we need to raise the Series A? Do we need to do what the startups are doing? do like a 2 million series A, and then, you know, hire more people and grow and, and do that story. But at the end, it's at a cost, for sure, of the employees. They have to work doubly hard. They have to figure it out. Uh, you have to show the money is being used. So it's not sustainable at all. And, you know, at Box Green, doing good means just being sustainable. So we set out, you know, to find out what, it, what does doing good mean, right? So I borrow books from Tom's, Wabi Parker, Charity Water, uh, even understanding this, the, the, the backstory of Ben and Jerry's, uh, trying to understand how they started the business. And really, you know, our story is no different. Again, some, wanting to do something good, two crazy guys bought a domain name, <laughs> uh, Andrew's Nuts, uh, growing the business as it is, and ultimately wanting to see, you know, can this brand actually resonate better in the community <laughs> that we are in. So yeah, so last month we, we are B Corp certified. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a certification board from the, value, from the US. So they kind of look at sustainable or social businesses with a cost. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's double bottom line as well. And um, yeah, we are proud to be one of these. Uh, so if you go on B Corp, you'll be able to find our profile up there by the end of the month. Yeah, so they have a very stringent process. Uh, 
Yeah, funny thing is uh, when they arranged the meeting, they, they, they didn't take into account that it was in Asia timing. So we had to do the, <laughs> we had to do the assessment in, uh, at like 3 a.m. And they go through every single question, so it took about three hours. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're happy now. I think a, a big part of it is we're we're part of B Corp. I think it's just the beginning. We st we still have a lot more to do to tell, and doing good is not just to the community, it's to the company, it's to the employees, it's to how we source sustainably as possibly as we can, be environmentally friendly in our packaging, uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, I think the bottom line now is uh, we're still like any other startup, burning money. <laughs> And uh, but we're close to doing that. I think uh, we're close to profitability. I think we have switched gears a bit to kind of be sustainable. Uh, so we are targeting to be uh, profitable by end of Q2. Uh, and again, it's not just about go, 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 spend the money and grow, right? Uh, I think when investors talk to us, the real uh, people who are interested in us are the people who believe in the story and what good that we're trying to do. Uh, so yeah, I think at the end of the day, we in, on, in July, it'll be our third year birthday. Uh, so we're still around. It's all about staying alive <laughs> and uh, having fun at the same time. Yeah, so this is our team. Uh, we, are willing, this, we, we do this uh, every quarterly. We go to Willing House to, to volunteer as well. Uh, and yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a small, I wouldn't say small, but it's okay team. I think right now we're still kind of in, in the process of rebuilding the team. Uh, yeah, and again, happy to answer any questions that you guys have. <laughs> Thanks. As you are thinking about your questions, I need to do a quick remodel. So if you are sitting in this area, could you please pull your chair slightly forward? If you are the by the door, make your way in. This area you can't see, but you can hear really well and there's more air conditioning. Or you can wait, we'll be pulling out a couple more chairs. Or you can come up to this area. And there are two wonderful chairs right up here in the front, okay? Let's get everyone moved in, into the cool space of the room. probably did. <laughs> there are two chairs up here. Is that another chair? Oh, someone there? Oh, one more? Okay, we have a third chair. We have one more chair up here. You're welcome to sit on the floor if you like. It's okay. Finding something to lean on. There's another one more chair here. Or finding somewhere where you can stay for a little while. Maybe just make sure you shift from side to side. Fantastic. Now you have an opportunity to ask Walter some questions. I really love what he said about um, doing good to the company and to the people in it as well. I think sometimes when we work in social entrepreneurship, it's easy to forget that. Um, perhaps I can start. <laughs> uh, what, what made it so difficult to, hire, to fire that person? What did you think or feel that made it difficult? Um, I pretty much like to put myself in, always in another person's shoes. Uh, I think uh, nobody, and I mean not nobody, everybody will remember uh, the day that they are fired, if they ever get fired. I think it's one of those things that will forever be in your memory. Even I mean, if I imagine myself being fired, yeah, I'll probably remember my boss and that, that, that douchebag or whoever has fired me, right, for the rest of my life. <laughs> and uh, it was really difficult because, uh, again, on what premise do we, you know, do we, on what grounds do we do that? Like, just saying cultural fit is a very vague term to let someone go, right? But you can feel the energy, and sometimes when the energy gets toxic, uh, people don't dare to speak up. Or people so, sort of tune off, you know. They start, you know, just not not caring about anything else. They don't contribute ideas, and that's where you feel like something needs to change. Uh, and when you go to the root cause of the problem, if it's one person, they may have good intentions, but they are not doing it well. It becomes hard because it's it's more like a character thing. Uh, and when we always try to pe uh, preach about hiring for character, train for skills. Uh, I think we didn't we didn't live up to that standard. So for me, I felt really bad, uh, not not holding up to that principle as well. And at the end of the day, yeah, really, you know, the whole team or the people that join us, they don't know anything when they join Box Screen or a startup, but they learn along the way. And I think that's the spirit. So when someone comes in and have that 
skills and they are doing it over others and throwing it in a different way, it, it makes people uncomfortable. And that's our culture. We are willing to sacrifice a little bit of growth, but you know, to help everyone move on to do greater things. So yeah, the hardest is really putting myself in their shoes uh, and uh, kind of trying to feel like how, like understand how she'll feel. Uh, and yeah, to me, you have to do it yourself to, to, to find out. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah, and to do it amicably sometimes, you know, you can say it's professional, but at the end of the day, people are still losing their job. And to me, you know, we hire it to give them a chance to work on something interesting and exciting. And them being left behind, it's always a, a case. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. I guess the big part is uh, even now as a, as a founder uh, a lot of things that's not being said again is the mental condition or the, that, that the founder has to go through a big part of it is you have to be strong but at the same time you don't really know anything right I mean even to be honest uh, for me, every day is a, is a learning, trying to make a decision on uh, what to go next for box screen. So I'll say if you would like an example of really what fucked up, I think you know, even our Series A funding didn't go very well. Uh, you know, uh, we, I spent the last uh, March trying to race around, but again, uh, the funding situation changed. Uh, our numbers don't, don't add up, are not good enough. Uh, people like to invest in robotics AI nowadays is the flavor of the month instead of a food tech company uh, that's trying to make e-commerce you know maybe five years ago e-commerce works you know you can get funding for that but nowadays you know you better have an AI or robotic angle <laughs> to kind of get something I mean investors are still nice to us they still talk to us but you know you kind of know like you know when you think back again do you want to you know, the investor asks us, why not just change it into a platform and bring all the social entre brands social entrepreneurship like companies who are doing social good onto the platform and start selling it, you know, since you have the reach. Uh, things like this that you have to do with, you have to, you have to weigh the balance. So for me, I felt like, okay, maybe the fundraising isn't going to work. We probably run out of money in six months if we, things carry on like this. So we have to tell the, the team, right? Like, guys, can't do this anymore. Oops. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, there are people who are, who, are, who are leaving, who have left. I think they kind of cut, trim some of the fat. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would say uh, the fundraising is not an end all. Uh, I think it's just a, a perspective thing. But I'm sure people are hoping for me to raise fund. I think like if you join a startup, you are hoping the startup raise more money. You move in a better office, and then you know the team becomes so big. You can tell people like you know you know you're, you're in a big company like you know oh, Carousel, Redmart, you know etc. Right. So, but again, when you come back to ask yourself, do you want to do do it? And the answer is no. So uh, for me, I think fundraising will take it as it comes. Yep. Um, so I think when people come to Fuck Up Nights, there's an, um, an image of Fuck Up that's like an explosion. It's a thing that happened instantaneously in one moment, one mistake that triggered everything. Um, but here we, we brought in the definition of Fuck Up a little bit to include uh, doing things that you don't want to do and doing it for quite a long time. Things that look successful on the outside and just hiding all of the, the terrible sides to it. Um, not being honest with the team and just taking on the burden themselves. Like, these are all fuck ups in a different way. They're not so big and explosive. They're kind of like a, a constant nagging thing, like a thorn that's stuck. Yeah. So we're including those. And I think we, we um, have those more as well. Other questions? right now um, I think a big part is always thinking about the hardest part is uh, what to do next for the company it's still a young company honestly everyone is you're kind of throwing uh, you know everything on the wall and see what sticks so one moment we kind of have this snack delivery service and the next moment we want to see oh vending machine looks like it's there's an opportunity then we go in to do that so I think the hardest thing is trying to find like a clear you know, path on what to do next. 
and it's easy to kind of like spread yourself too thin and you know you just want to do everything but at the same time you know we just had a Mandarin gallery an outlet just a small pop-up at Orchard Mandarin gallery and okay that was like a fuck up honestly so <laughs> So we, we were like, hey, let's try retail, right? We got a space and, you know, those guys are great enough to pay for the rent for a month and do up all the, the decorations and, and, and all the interior design. So we went in knowing like, yes, yes, it's time for like, you know, from clicks to bricks, you know, online to offline, you know, the buzzwords. <laughs> and then the startups can go in there and do all this. But, you know, the reality is uh, we're not ready for retail at all. We went in there. We, you know, retail is really tough because you got to have someone there from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. We don't have the resource to hire anybody there. So guess what? Everyone says like, you know, teamwork, everyone takes shift. So I created a timetable and make everybody put in hours to put to, to kind of man the store. And you know, when someone goes in there again, what's the objective of it? Is it just to have fun or try or, or what, right? It wasn't clear enough on, on strategy part of things. So we went in there and it was miserable as hell. We didn't know what we were doing. People didn't want to come in. We don't know, you know, we are on the third floor, which has zero traffic. So it's really hard. You know, just opposite us is the Victoria's Secret like warehouse. So those ladies are like pushing things out every time and then they just come in and buy stuff. So it just ended last week. Yeah, but it was a reminder that, you know, uh, to think things through a little bit more, especially, you know, for online you can test and try. But for things like offline, uh, there are way more things involved. Like if you want to plan for a retail outlet, you got to have all the, the blueprint ready. And, and, and it's, it's just different beasts all together. So as much as we would like to MVP and do it, I think it kind of burned us. People are burned out. People on weekends, we have to go to the shop and sit down even though there's nobody, <laughs> you know. And those are not like fun stuff, honestly. <laughs> And you know, when someone walks in, you always have to put up a smile and welcome them to try. So you know, yeah, that's that's a, that's a that's a legit fuck up. And every day, the hardest thing is to think about what to do next and what opportunity presents itself. Do you take it or not? There's someone there. Should we like just do do it? You good? Okay. 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 Unless it's a burning question. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the night. <laughs>